Hey, welcome to Excel Dent Removal. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I remove a small dent in a car door. So maybe you are seeing a bunch of other videos here online about how to uh, fix a small dent. And a lot of those methods are either putting a glue tab on the dent and just pulling it out and uh, it just looks like it's gonna just come flat. Um, other people are maybe using some uh, heat or hot water or something to try and pop the dent out. And unfortunately, that's uh, not always gonna work. Um, only works on certain specific damage or obviously somebody trained to know how to use those tools. Now with this particular dent, there is a reason why that's not gonna work and I wanna show you uh, the reasons for that. All right, so I wanna show you the damage we have here in our special paintless dent repair light. Um, and we've got this area of damage circled. Now this is way outside the damaged area, but not too much. You can see uh, the dented area right here. And what we have are these crowns or high spots around it. And this is particularly the reason why sticking a tab on here or trying to suction this out is not going to work. Now there's a, a couple of different methods that we would use to actually fix this properly. And one would be actually taking our special tap downs or hammers and actually pushing down this ridge here, this high spot, these crowns that we have around the damage. And the reason being is what happened was when this got hit with another door, another door hit, smacked it, it doesn't just push in and become just a dent. Uh, the metal flows uh, certain directions and that's another reason why we actually have to uh, fix it a certain way is because we actually have to understand that flow of the metal and how to flatten it back out. So what happened with this is when it hit, the door hit it, it probably hit from an under angle a little bit here. And you can see the reason this happens is because that metal got pushed and raised it up here. So I wanna share with you uh, a couple things first. Uh, one is the you know hot water or popping the dent out trick. I'm not gonna attempt anything like that. It's not gonna work for something like this. Another one is the glue pulling method. Now something like that, uh, with the glue pulling method, I could attempt to put a tab right in the center of this and try and pull it out. But like I had mentioned with those crowns and the ridges on there, um, it's gonna have a lot of tension. Those crowns hold that metal really tight. So trying to pull that out probably wouldn't work. Um, this is a pretty soft metal. This is a Toyota and I probably can move a little bit of it, but it would distort it and it probably cause it, me more trouble trying to fix this properly. Um, if you don't, affect the metal and and do it in a proper order um, you run into the problem of not being able to do it properly um, this is something i find sometimes when people want to um, try and attempt to do the repair themselves and then they come in and say hey can you fix this we've we've already got maybe half the dent out and it looks pretty good but we just can't finish it off and the reason being is because they didn't start it properly so with that sometimes we can't fix it or it takes twice as long to actually repair the damage properly because um, they didn't do it in the right order. Um, now, what I'm going to show you first is typically we would like to knock down these crowns, not completely, probably about 50%, and that would take some of the pressure off so I can push out the damage. But what I'm gonna show you is I'm actually gonna push in the center of this damage a little bit with a soft tool, probably with some tape on it, and try and bring it up a little bit before I knock it down, just to show you the difference and how much trouble it is without pushing the pressure down. Um, the reason being is if I did it the other way, obviously I could fix it faster, I would do a, a better repair. All right, so this here is the first tool that I have. It is a paintless dent repair tool. It has a little bit of a bend in it so that when I'm going down the door, I'm gonna do some twisting and turning to push down in the damage. Now you can see here that I do have some tape on this tool just to soften up the tip. If I use the sharp edge or a pointy edge with the pressure of these crowns, if I attempted that, it would actually push up that damage very sharp and cause a lot more damage um, down the middle of the dent and you just wouldn't be able to fix that or flatten it back out. All right, so I'm starting right at the top and just slowly trying to bring up the bottom, the center of that damage. And it might be difficult to tell, but I'm, I'm putting pretty good pressure on there. And I'm actually having a difficult time 
you can see as many times as I'm pushing on this, it's really not making a big difference. And that is because of those crowns and the high spots around the outside of the damage. I'm gonna continue to work my way down the dent, slowly keep pushing on it here. And it's probably making a little bit of a difference, but definitely having some trouble getting it to stay. And that's the problem you're gonna have with any other method of trying to push a dent out like this with a crown or a ridge or a high spot around it. Just continuing to work my way down as it gets bigger towards the bottom. I'm moving back and forth, still trying to stay in the center and bring it up a little bit, but it's just not making much of a difference. So I definitely will have to get in here and bring down those crowns. And even at the bottom here, it will make a little bit of difference. There's less pressure holding the damage on the bottom, but I don't wanna just bring up the whole bottom and not this area around the top because it'll lock up and actually then I won't be able to do anything with it. So I'm gonna take that out there. You can still see there's still maybe softened it just a little bit through here, but I definitely have to take this crowns down. So let's do that next. All right, so I've got a few different options for knockdowns and hammers for bringing this down. And a few that I'm gonna use here, I'm gonna try a few different ones, but I wanna point out some issues with using certain ones over another. So I have some special knockdowns here. You can see this one's got a very sharp point to it. This one actually is a little bit more dull. It's not quite as sharp. I don't know if you can see that there. And then I have this one here, which has a metal end to it and a big rubber cap to it. So that will work pretty well for some of that too. Now, the reason being you don't want to start with a sharp one is if I take this sharp one and I'm hitting it on there, this tip is designed to, uh, for very detail, very fine work. So hitting this knock down here will actually make little divots in there. So I want to start with something soft. Now, a couple of hammers I have here. This is just a regular uh, general hammer and not too much. It's got more of a, a solid hit side on it and a little bit hard rubber so that it just has a different feel and a different hit to it. Um, here is another hammer with a blending hammer. I've got a, another sharp tip on that end that I use sometimes. This has a cap. Um, it has a metal head that I can use sometimes. Right now I've got some tape on it that helps soften up the hit a little bit. Now when I'm knocking down damage like this, I actually want to be as close to the panel with my head here as I can so I can actually see exactly where these high spots are. And I've got my other light here as close to the panel as possible so that I'm looking at the reflection knowing exactly where I'm pushing on it here. Taking this soft cap again with the soft hammer. See, I'm just getting as close as possible to this so I can see right down the metal, trying to flatten it out as best as possible. All right, so after some of that knocking down there, let's see if we can see just a little bit of difference here. Get a little bit closer. What you're gonna wanna look at is you're gonna wanna look at the damage in the light itself, in those stripes. So I'm gonna show you the detail in those stripes. Let's see if we can get a little focus here. So, backing off just a little bit here. You can see there's just a little bit of low. It's kind of a waviness to it. 
There we go. We can see that just in that line right there, it kind of widens out. There's a low spot there. Took out most of the crowns. There's still going to be just a little bit in there that we can see. If you just look into the detail, there's a little bit. Let's back off here a little bit more. So you can see it's just kind of distorted. And what that is, is just a matter of having to level out and we're going to flatten out some of this. So you can see with the crowns, just knocking those crowns down actually took out a lot of the dent um, from before. I take a look at that. Before we knocked down the crowns, there was still a dent there. Well, I haven't even pushed on it yet. Just taking out those crowns actually moved the metal back into the center of the dented area. And that's one process that we use to actually move the metal it's not going to pop out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside with another PDR tool, maybe start with a soft one and then move to some sharper tools. And that will fine tune, take out a lot of the detail in orange peel. And then I will take another hammer and probably blend and move some of this down a little bit more. Right, and I'm just in the center of that dent again. Still got the soft tool, the tape on it, and just lightly trying to bring up that center, trying to bring it soft. I don't want to poke a sharp tool in there. Um, that's only for fine detail work. Right now, just softly bringing it up, not making any poke marks. Nothing that's extreme, you know, immediately visible of where I'm pushing, just softly pushing on it. Here I've, I've moved to the top, kind of where that outside of that crown was. Still a little bit of a, a low area there. So I'm bringing that up and working around the outside of it here. And I'm down at the bottom can see just the metal moving just a little bit at a time but I'm only pushing in the low areas just softly bringing it up I don't want any drastic pushes that will cause more damage it'll be very noticeable All right, we've got that pretty close there. I think there's still a little bit of crown right up at the top here. So I'm gonna try and knock that down a little bit more one more time. All right, and one thing I'll often do is actually move my light in a different position. Um, I've got this one horizontal here. Let me raise it up so you can see. Got a horizontal direction with it here. And the reason for that, and the reason for that is uh, with that crown and that high spot towards the top, um, from this angle, I actually can see where it's still kind of rounded right about here, and I need to bring that down. With the light vertical this way, uh, I couldn't see that um, from this direction. So bringing it this way, if you have some crowns, you know, on a top or a bottom, you always want to put that light in the same direction so you can see the transition from where it, it, it is high. And I've got this spot right here I'm going to try and knock down a little bit. Just using this uh, knockdown right here with this a little bit wider tip on it and a very sharp tip. I don't want to go with anything too big um, and push down a big area. I just want to get that little fine line that's right there.
And so you can see when I'm doing the tapping, it's almost the same as the process from the inside and in pushing on it. I'm not making a big hit, not a hard hit. It's just a very light pushing down of those spots. Um, even if you look at it really close in the light and with strong detail, you can almost see the vibration of the panel and that vibration actually uh, moves the metal too. Yeah, all right, so I'm gonna go in here probably a little bit with a softer tool down at the bottom and then a sharper tool uh, right in the center of that uh, deepest part of the damage. Gonna work on it a little bit more here to, to do that, to finish it off. Um, you can barely see any of that detail in the camera. Um, I could probably show you just a little bit, but it's such a fine amount um, that it's very hard to pick up but obviously I can see it with my lights and my eyes to be able to see it. So I'm gonna work on a little bit more here and then we'll show you the final result um, in detail at the end. And, and you can see, um, just so I'm getting this as flat as possible, I'm not just taking out just the lows, I'm actually leveling out the rest of the metal so it, it evens out as it goes out. And I'm, I've got my light here as close to the panel as possible, put my head as close as possible to the panel here so I can just see that it's not still a little bit low and I'm blending out the uh, rest of the damage here. And you can see this final result of pushing it out, uh, knocking it down, blending it around. This actually takes probably the most amount of time compared to just getting the bulk of the damage out. Um, and that's where you get those excellent uh, quality results from a professional. They're gonna be able to get this completely flawless and looking excellent. So I'm gonna speed up the process here so you can watch me finish this damage. But um, you can see that this is gonna take me a little bit of time, but I'm gonna get it uh, looking perfectly smooth.
All right, let's take a look at the finished result here. Get up close. You can definitely tell that there's no uh, poke marks. None of those crowns left in it. Definitely looks great. Um, what you could see when you were watching that video before, if, you've, if you're still watching here, I wanna show you. So the dent was in this damaged area, but I also, once I had that light all the way back, and right up against the panel, had my head against the panel. I actually looked down all the way along here. And the reason being is because you can see this uh, nick here. So whenever the door hit, it didn't just hit here, it hit down the whole door. So I wanted to make sure that I was getting all the damage that was even down to here. And there was a little bit of low area just at the bottom of this. And that original dent, you know, obviously was here. Uh, but there was some low spots here, so still was flattening that out a little bit so we could get it. Um, you can tell here that's completely gone. Hey, all right, thanks for watching this paintless dent removal video here today on how to remove a small dent in the car door. Uh, if you've been watching this far and you like what you saw, thanks for hitting that like button. Um, if you do want to see more paintless dent repair videos when they come out, I encourage you to subscribe here to the channel. And then also watch some of these other videos that we have on paintless dent repair. We've got uh, many different methods. So this was one method that we used for this particular dent, but every dent is a little bit different. And we've got glue pulling, we've got uh, other damage to other panels, we've got hail damage repair, everything like that. So check out some of these other videos. Again, thanks for watching.